you know, at a film festival you always have many young filmmakers uh, uh, in the past few years, uh, everyone has, you know, clips that want, they want to go viral and such. And I think the connotation of viral has changed maybe over the last few years. And this seems to have maybe reappropriated the term a little bit and uh, added some of the sinister elements of, uh, of the concept of something going viral back to the phrase. Was that something you were after at all? In terms of the title, you mean? I guess the, the very thought of something being viral. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the, the, the sort of non-literal viralness is very connected to literal viralness, um, which, yeah, I think it's related. <laughs> um, also, uh, Caleb Landry is an actor who I haven't seen a lot, but he's always been very interesting to me in his physicality and uh, and what he's able to do with his face. And he carries himself in a way that not a lot of young actors do. And um, when you uh, were looking for someone to play Sid, uh, did you have a concept in mind of kind of the, the very physicality of the actor you were looking for? Or was it something that when you saw Caleb, you know, what he brought to it really made you, made the character take shape for you? Um, I, I think it was a bit of both. I mean, it was always going to be a, a fairly physical role. Um, because he had to deteriorate and it had to be in his body language and, and so we needed someone who was a, a nuanced physical actor who could, who could handle that. Um, but he also could do way more than I anticipated and, and so as we started working with him and he was able to really you know, transform himself in, in an interesting way, we ran with it. Um, so it was, yeah, it was definitely collaborative. I was curious as well about the sound design, I think. Um, sound design, you know, when it's used really well, it almost feels like something that's under the skin of, uh, of a film. And uh, I think it's used really effectively here. And I was wondering some of the conversations you had with your, your sound designer of what you wanted to achieve with the, the soundscape for the film. Um, well, the soundscape was, it was, there were sort of two elements. There was the, the more traditional sound design, like the, uh, the inside of the capsule and that kind of you know, bodily, stuff that, that we worked out, and that was uh, Dave Rose, the, the sound designer. Uh, and then there was the score that kind of has a sound design-y thing to it sometimes, which is uh, E.C. Woodley, our composer, uh, was Eric, who's actually a cousin of mine, um, had this uh, access to this huge bank of analog synths, and so we, uh, he, he would input uh, orchestral chords and, and all this interesting stuff, and then um, get waves out of it almost they sort of had a certain amount of control over it. It was sort of like an old operator switchboard where they were patching in all these different amps and, uh, uh, and then he added them to the, to the film. And I think it had a good, also a sort of bodily quality. So we, we talked about it, about it quite a lot. And, uh, yeah, fortunately, he's a good composer. Oh, uh, I just, because he's a, uh, very, he's sick all the time. And so he's sort of aware of, you know, the, the details of his illness, and so I like the idea that it's sort of like he goes out for a smoke, but he's just like checking his temperature. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't see my father's films until I was sort of in my 20s because they were, you know, I guess because I was too young, and then, yeah, they weren't age appropriate. And uh, <laughs> thanks. That was Kevin's joke, actually. Um, and, um, yeah, so it's hard to say. I mean, I think I was more influenced by him just because he's my father and you know, we share genes and, and I was raised by him. And so I, I think there's a kind of, um, a, a, you know, an overlapping of, of character that comes from that. Um, but I can't really see his films the way that normal people see films because they're, uh, I'm too close to them and they're part of my family's history. So I uh, wasn't inspired by them in, in the sort of traditional sense. But I grew up around it, so I'm sure it had an effect on me. So do I think it helps the question? Should I be repeating these questions? Can you hear? Yeah, it's a big house. Okay, the question is, do I think uh, having my father was, was helpful or a burden? Um, I don't know. I think, you know, it's a, it's, it's a weird thing. You know, I, I think it's, uh, there are interesting elements. People are probably more uh, immediately interested in what I'm doing because of, of him, which is useful. And, the film industry, but they also interpret what I'm doing sort of in, the, in the, the context of his career, which is, you know, maybe a little dubious when you're trying to do your own thing, but um, yeah, it's just always been the case. Have, have you ever been tempted to do like a comedy? 
You didn't think this was a comedy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I didn't want to think. I didn't want to think about his career when I was doing this stuff because, you know, one way or the other, if it, uh, I didn't want to just deliberately avoid it because it would be defining myself in relation uh, by his career. So, uh, no, actually, we we didn't have to. I mean, we we cut some stuff out, but it wasn't. Uh, the canned version was a bit longer, and we cut stuff out, but it was a creative decision. We weren't we weren't forced to to censor anything. So that was that was great. Um, I was incredibly sick, and I was having a, having a fever dream and thinking about illness and, and uh, how illness is a kind of intimate thing, because when you're sick you have something in your body that came from someone else's body, and, and that's pretty intimate. Um, and yeah, I just tried to think of who, who might see disease as, as, as something intimate like that, and I thought, you know, a celebrity obsessed fan might be into that. Ah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I guess I, I really wanted it to be a, a subjective film, and, and you know, it sort of dips in and out of, of this sort of dreamlike, hallucinatory thing. Um, and and also, um, I, I guess I didn't want uh, I didn't want other people to have perspective on him. Like I wanted it because he he's sort of completely defined by this culture, but he doesn't realize that he thinks he's sort of above it and distance, distance from it. And, and so I thought keeping it subjective and, and letting that unfold internally would be more effective. Right, uh, yeah, the fixed, uh, well, the, the white look was sort of, excuse me, <laughs> um, the white look was, uh, was partly a, a way to control the viewer's eye because in a white frame, anything that isn't white really pops out and so, uh, it could lend a special significance to the, you know, the faces on the walls or, or the blood. When the blood's against white, it, it, it pops and it, it carries a, a sort of visual weight. Um, and also there, you know, there are elements that are extremely sterile and then there are elements that are more sort of meaty. And I was interested in the, um, that, that kind of divide between celebrities as these media constructions and these, these sort of, uh, you know, cultural constructions that are so removed from the human being. And, and then the human being, so uh, I, I kind of wanted to mirror that in the, the production design, have these really inhuman, sterile uh, sets, and then have the really bodily, you know, fetishizing the body, and then have those things kind of collide at the end. Um, and in terms of the, the visual style, I guess some of that was, um, you know, the fixed, the fixed camera, I guess that was, a little harder to explain. It was just a, that's something I thought I liked stylistically, the idea of not having the, the camera get too pushy. And um, even though it's sort of a, st a stylized film, I guess we started, um, uh, we're trying to think of it in terms of like a, a more natural eye. And if you have a fixed camera and you let things unfold in front of it, it, it doesn't feel like you're not feeling the camera as much in, in those. So. I was curious, do you feel that we're hitting like some sort of critical mass or breaking point when it comes to celebrity culture and all that's left is for us to literally consume them? Or, or, or are, you, are you someone who's been long fixated with like people's fixation on celebrities? Um, well, I think it's kind of an old, I, I think it connects to a broader, weirder human impulse that I don't, I'm not totally sure of um, where it originates. Um, but, you know, the idea, you know, the, the impulse to deify people, you know, the, you look at, uh, it's, you know, the saints, people elevated almost to the status of gods and, you know, that same, the iconography and the, the physical fetishism of, uh, you know, old uh, churches that claim to have the finger bones of particular saints. And uh, so I think, I don't think it's, I don't think it's new really. It, 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 it has a particular flavor in our culture, I think because we consume media at such a, an incredible pace and, and it's that consumption that creates um, fame. So I, I think we're really seeing just how removed fame is from accomplishment and, and it can just be its, its own thing through repetition of, of imagery. Um, I don't know if we're hitting a critical mass though or if it's just a, a kind of way it's mutated in our culture. Um, I don't know. I didn't really set out to, I mean, it's kind of like a horror science fiction film, but I, I didn't really see it that way when I was making it. It, it just sort of, uh, like I wasn't aiming for that. So, um, yeah, I think maybe other ideas I have would fall into that, that sort of genre, but not 
I'm not deliberately trying to stick to it. It's just sort of what's interesting to me. Cool. Well, uh, thank you so much for, for seeing the film and for sticking around. And, uh, yeah, have a great night. And just a reminder, the film screens once more during the festival and then out theatrically on October 12th. And thank both these gentlemen for joining us today.